I'm Matthew Bartlett and um, I'm here with uh, Green MP Holly Walker and this is, um, we're here at the Anglican Chaplaincy for a Do Something event uh, focusing on the issue of child poverty and uh, Holly Walker has been good enough to address us this evening. So Holly, I suppose I want to know what do you think the government's role is, what are you, as the Green Party, what are you pushing in the area of child poverty? I think basically when we're thinking about child poverty and how to do things better for our children because we're not doing very well at the moment, we have to think about the role of the government in terms of the rights of children. So if we agree, and I think most people do, that children have the right to have the best possible start in life, that they have the right to have their basic needs met, to have enough to eat, to live in a safe, warm home, to have clothing, to be able to participate in school and community life, then the role of the government is to somehow set policies which allow that to happen, which allow children to have their basic needs met. And then it's about looking at what works in different communities and, um, and finding out ways to make that available to every child. So that all sounds sort of expensive, given our current, you know, austere times. How are we going to pay for all that kind of stuff? Well, I think the question really is, can we afford not to do this? Because when we look at the impact of not addressing child poverty in the long term, it's very significant. The, the amount of money we spend in education, in welfare, in health, and in the justice system in particular, um, when children get older and become young adults and adults, if they haven't had their basic needs met when they're children, they are likely to, to run into health problems, to perform poorly at school, to get into trouble and end up in the justice system. And then it costs billions and billions of dollars per year f for us all to cover those costs later on. So what we need to do is invest early on um, and spend the money at the beginning of a child's life uh, where it can make the most difference. And if we do that, we can save considerably in the long term. Hmm. Um, well, I mean, that all sounds very commonsensical in a way. Like, of course, we all want our, uh, ch all our children to have the best possible start. So uh, I wonder what are the big blocks to that? Why isn't it happening? Why, is, why have we had sort of 30 or 40 years of failure on this issue? Um, I think that's a really difficult question to answer because ultimately most New Zealanders, I think, um, would agree that we've got a problem and we're not doing well by our children and we all want to do the best for our children. Um, I think what we lack is leadership from our politicians and from our governments and not just the current government but successive governments actually who haven't put the best interests of children first and foremost in their policy making. Um, there are various reasons why that might happen. A cynic might say it's because children don't vote and so they're, therefore they're not the priority of parliaments when they're setting their policies. Um, it may just be that they are, they are uh, voiceless and easier to skip over when we're thinking about policy making. Whatever the reason is, I think there is a growing awareness now that we haven't got it right for our children. And what I think we really need all New Zealanders to do is to challenge politicians of all parties and all colours to put children at the heart of policy. So challenging politicians, that's a good, that seems like a very good start. Is there anything else that you'd want to see... Um, say ordinary people or students or uh, workers or whatever, what would you like them to be, see, to be doing on this issue if they feel passionate about it? There are really, I mean, are there really two things. We've, the reason we need to challenge our politicians is because we need to address the, the, the top of the cliff. Before things get really, really bad, we need to address the underlying causes of poverty. And that is ultimately a political solution. And so that's about um, keeping people politically engaged, doing things like writing letters to the editor, uh, visiting your local MPs and talking about the issues of child poverty to make sure that they stay on, on the political agenda in the big picture. There's also the fact that we've got major issues in terms of housing, in terms of health, in terms of violence and abuse um, for children who are living right now with the consequences of the fact that we haven't done anything for, th for 30 or 40 years. And there are a huge number of community organisations, service providers, church groups, NGOs um, and many student groups as well who work directly on those issues and help to alleviate those issues for, for children as they're immediately affected. And I think a really valuable thing for people to do is to contribute their time and their resources, their volunteer hours um, to those kinds of organisations as well if they are able to do so.